Good old non shiny portrait. Yeah, new portrait. Well, this roll cost me five pounds. Expired. Expired, but like by a year or six months or something. And it's not shiny. Yeah. And it's not shiny. <laughs> and that's all we care about. I can't remember how out of date this one is. It's pretty similar. But I think it's about a year or six months or something. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Uh, what does that mean? I take that as the start line. Should I put it along that? Yeah. <laughs> Just none of them come out. <laughs> so this video is going to be comparing Kodak's Portra 800 versus Lomography's Lomo 800 film. I shot both of these rolls in 120. I took some portraits of my friends using my Pentax 67. I was using the 105 f2.4. So today you join me in my currently being refurbished mum's flat. I thought this would be a really great place to shoot a video just because of the light that's coming in. I don't know which roll to shoot first. I'm gonna shoot the, the I'm gonna shoot the 800, portrait 800. This is so nice. Good old portrait, not shiny, not that shiny new shit. Like all the portrait these days is just shiny. I don't like it, I don't like it. but I'm gonna rate these rolls both at 800. No, you just pushed it back. So you want the hair back or you want my hand pushing it back? You want you to push it back. Thank you. Yeah. I know it's thinking. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's exhausting. All right, go dead like close. Oh, the one where my arm was wrapped. Kind of looks cool. Rowan, if you look off that the direction and Mia looks here. So dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> hey, Rowan, yeah. get out of the shot. Right now. <laughs> hey, just stand there. Three, two, one. <laughs> Is it too bright? Right, three, two, one. Do the hair thing. Yeah. Drawing, come on, come on. All of you actually. But like, what's the line? If you're not supposed to do it, otherwise, we're all like. Right, three. This is love for Three, two, one. Really, let me take your photo in here. Three, two, one. B. Ruben, do you want a shot? Yeah. Three, two, one. Okay, so that's. Is that the roll? So that was the roll of Portrait 800. Now I'm going to shoot the roll of Lomo 800 and see how it compares. Do the do the thing with your no on your left ear. Yeah. All right, go for it. You're getting us being filmed. Wait, Marina Joyce. A bunch of. Dead eyes. <laughs> 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 oh. a and so before the shoot, what I thought would happen was I knew the portrait would come up cleaner and skin tones and things like that would be more accurate. I knew the Lomography would come out maybe a bit more contrasty and a bit grainier, but the big thing for me 
was just how purple the Lomo 800 was. The portrait did a fantastic job of getting the skin tones perfect. The portrait was way more sharper. I just felt like the portrait had a bit more dynamic range. It sort of felt like the Lomo 800 was just a 400 speed film that had been pushed essentially to 800. <laughs> I can't, right, there's not enough right. light, there's not enough light. Yeah, okay, three, two, one. That was ugly, wait, can you do it with my head? Yeah. Three, two, one. Yes. And just the way the shadows came out on the Lomo 800, it just looked like a 400 speed film that had been pushed. I'm not sure, I thought, I didn't think the Lomo would come out this grainy and gritty and contrasty. The Lomo 800 kind of surprised me in that way. So we took some pictures at my mum's flat. Um, it was currently being refurbished, so it was completely empty. It looked kind of cool. Some of the walls were painted, some weren't. There were all these industrial lights that we used and two new chandeliers that had just been put in. So we mucked around in there. Initially, I wanted to do a sort of serious shoot, do some portraits, but we just ended up pissing around a bit too much. And I was pretty happy with some of the pictures. Um, these aren't the greatest photos I've ever taken, but there are at least two that I really liked. I'm not sure if I'll use them anywhere, but yeah, there are about two shots out of these rolls that I actually liked. I just wanted to compare Lomo 800 versus Portrait 800. Just considering how much Portrait 800 costs now, especially with the whole Kodak price bump, I think a box of, I don't even know how much it costs, but it's 14 quid for a roll of Portrait 800, whereas it's seven quid for a roll of Lomo 800. And just considering how cheap Lomo is in comparison to Portrait 800, I just wanted to compare the films and I also wanted to compare them on things like skin tones and contrast because I feel like a lot of people will see Lomo 800, especially in 120, as a cheaper alternative to Portrait 800 for portraits, considering Portrait 800 is a portrait film. I just wanted to make the comparison and see how Lomo 800 turned out when compared to Portrait 800. So in fairness to the Lomo, I shot that roll second and the light had started to go down. I used my Pentax TTL meter every time and they were technically exposed the same, rated at 800, exposed perfectly, exposed for box speed. I was shocked how grainy the Lomo came out. Yeah, I'm convinced it's like a 400 speed film that's pushed. I'm not sure, it just came out really grainy. It does look cool, but objectively, Portrait 800 is a much better film. If you want those clean medium format pictures, and the Lomography film just turned out so purple. I corrected it in Lightroom. All the shots of Lomography you see, they still look purple, but that's them corrected in Lightroom. Um, this is what it looks like just scanned, and this is what it looks like corrected. They just turned out so purple, I don't know what it was. Portra just nailed it, and the Lomography film is just so purple. The skin tones almost look like they did on Lomochrome Purple. I just, I wouldn't advise it for portraits. I think my conclusion on the two is just pay the extra money for Portrait 800, because I just think it's worth it, especially if you're using this film for a job or any professional work, go for Portrait 800. It's painful buying it, but I would advise it. Looking back at these shots and comparing them made me really appreciate Portrait as a film, just how sharp it is and how accurate it is. Both of these films were about a year out of date, but they were both the same out of dateness, so <laughs> that shouldn't be an issue. They were kept in the same spot in the same film bag where I keep all my film. I don't think that plays any part in these films looking different. So I ended up using all natural light. There's some really cool bits of light coming through the doors into the front room that I used to expose the face in some of the pictures. I think they came out really cool. There was one of Rowan and Mia. Um, that was actually my favorite one. That was the only one I really liked. I think that came out cool. Maybe in the future I'll do a video on studio lighting and stuff like that using some flash, but I just wanted to make the comparison as fair as possible and keep it consistent between the two roles. And just another thing on Portrait 800, I think it's only a stop away from 400, Portrait 400, and you could either push Portrait 400 a stop or just find a way to get an extra stop of light. 
I think that would be a really good money saver. If you can just manage to find more light or shoot earlier on in the day or things like that, I think that, that would save you a lot of money. You're gonna get a cleaner film. Portrait 800 was really clean, but obviously there's less grain with Portra 400 or Portra 160. I just think Portra costs so much money now. If you're gonna buy any Portra, I think Portra 400 is a ridiculous amount of money now. Portra 800 costs even more. I would just go for Portra 400 and maybe find a situation where there's more light, shoot outside instead of inside, blah, blah, blah. Obviously it doesn't work like that, but I think that's how I'd go around it. Or just push Portra 400 to stop. Can you just give me 10 minutes? Okay. Thanks. That's how I'd go around it, I think. I think that would save you the most money. I hope this video helped anyone who wanted to see how these films compare, and I hope it helped you out in your decision. If you like this video, then give me a like. And if you really want to subscribe, then subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.